Japan's enthusiasm for English education, similar to Korea, has created a high demand for foreign English tutors, making it an appealing destination for educators. While Japan is known for its low crime rate and is generally safe, it's important for those moving there, especially women, to be aware of cultural nuances and safety considerations. Awareness of certain stereotypes, such as the fetishization of white foreign women by some Japanese men, is crucial for navigating social interactions effectively. The case of Tatsuya Ichiyashi, who had this thing for white foreign women and ended up brutally murdering British English teacher Lindsay Ann Hawker, though extreme and rare, highlights the need for vigilance and safety awareness in Japan. This man is also famous for deforming his own face to avoid getting caught, so the story is pretty crazy. This incident, while not representative of the typical experience in Japan, serves as a reminder of the importance of being cautious in new environments. So today, let's talk about a horrific case in Japan, the murder of Lindsay Hawker. Back in 2007, alarm bells started ringing for Lindsay Hawker's family and friends just days after March 24th. Lindsay had mysteriously vanished. The last anyone saw of her, she was telling her taxi driver she'd be right back as she and a male companion arrived at an apartment complex. That very afternoon, her employers were puzzled by her no-show at work because it was totally out of character for her and she hadn't left any message. At first, they thought maybe it was just some mix-up. But then, that evening, her roommates realized that Lindsay hadn't returned home and hadn't left any note. That's when worry really set in. They rushed to report her missing to the police, hoping for a swift search. But when they provided all her details, description, contact info, and everything, the police's response was, lukewarm. They were not interested. After all, Lindsay was an adult. Maybe she just needed some space, the police thought. The time ticked by. Saturday turned into Sunday and then Monday rolled around. Still no word on Lindsay. Her roommate's worry turned to panic, especially when she missed work again without a word. Her employers even reached out to her family, but they were clueless too. Lindsay hadn't been in touch with them for three days either. Then, a roommate remembered something chilling. Lindsay had mentioned a creepy guy who'd follow her home, asking for English lessons. She had this gut feeling that this might be connected to Lindsay's disappearance, and she felt that the situation didn't look good at all. Lindsay, born in 1984, was a bright British woman. She studied biology at the University of Leeds and was an outstanding student, graduating with first-class honors in 2006. Her family was well off and she could have pursued further studies, but Lindsay wanted to carve her own path. So she headed off to Japan. In Japan, Lindsay found her calling as an English teacher at the Koiwa School, which was part of the Nova Teaching Company. She wasn't alone in this journey. She teamed up with two other female native English teachers. And to manage the high living costs of Tokyo, they opt to live together in Chiba, forming a close-knit group. They had each other's backs, just like any good friends would. And at the Koiwa School, Lindsay's dedication and passion for teaching shone through. Her students adored her, neighbors respected her, and everyone agreed Lindsay was a gem. And despite being far from England, she stayed connected with her family, friends, and boyfriend through frequent emails, messages, and Skype calls. And her encounter with Tatsuya Itsuyashi began on March 20th, 2007. 
After work, as Lindsay was heading to her bike, Tatsuya suddenly appeared, claiming to be one of her students. And Lindsay was no fool. She could tell this guy wasn't a student. He was too old and unfamiliar. So trying to ignore him, she got on her bike and started pedaling home. And that's when the chill ran down her spine. This man was following her on foot, trying to keep pace with her bike. She pedaled faster, but he kept up jogging and running. She was so scared. And when she reached her apartment, she felt relieved. She figured if he tried anything, she'd just scream for help. But the man, breathless and persistent, followed her right up to her apartment door. Tatsuya, who was completely oblivious to Lindsay's discomfort, apologized for the chase, but he insisted that he wanted to hire her for English lessons. The situation was bizarre. Who gets followed home by someone just wanting tutoring? Lindsay, standing at her door, firmly declined this request. And inside Lindsay's apartment, her two friends were surprised to see her with a man. Despite the rejection, he wasn't ready to give up. Claiming that he was exhausted from the chase, he asked for a glass of water. And maybe out of pity and feeling safe with her friends around, Lindsay let him in. While inside, Tatsuya renewed his offer to hire Lindsay as a tutor, and this time he offered $32 per hour. And this caught Lindsay's attention. Though she was already earning well, the extra cash was tempting, especially considering her commutes to Tokyo. So after a moment's thought, she accepted this offer. Before leaving, Tatsuya handed Lindsay a drawing he had made of her, which is creepy again, along with his name and phone number. Her roommates were left puzzled by this interaction, but they figured a meeting in a public place should be safe. Later, Lindsay filled in her family and boyfriend about this strange encounter. She mentioned how creepy it felt, but also that she'd taken the tutoring offer for some extra savings. After getting approval from Nova to take the side job, as long as it didn't interfere with her main work, everything seemed set. On March 24th, Lindsay and Tatsuya met at a cafe in Tokyo. CCTV footage showed Lindsay maintaining professionalism, while Tatsuya seemed less respectful of personal boundaries, often invading her space. After the lesson, Lindsay expected immediate payment, but Tatsuya had other plans. Tatsuya claimed that he'd forgotten his wallet at his apartment in Ichikawa and suggested that they take a taxi there so Lindsay could collect her tutoring fee. And surprisingly, Lindsay agreed, overlooking the fact that Tatsuya was essentially a stranger and could be dangerous. Upon reaching Tatsuya's apartment, Lindsay asked the taxi driver to wait, assuring him that she'd be quick. But she never returned. After waiting for over five minutes, the driver left to continue his work. And this visit, unfortunately, led to Lindsay's tragic end. Bill Hawker, Lindsay's father, flew to Japan with her boyfriend, Ryan Garside, who also had crucial information. Lindsay had mentioned a stalker to him. This detail was corroborated by Lindsay's roommate, who still had the paper with Tatsuya's contact details that he had given to Lindsay. When they brought this information to the police, they recognized Tatsuya's name. He had a history of criminal behavior, including robbery and sexual assault. He had avoided jail in the past, with his father paying 1 million yen in compensation to the victim, who then chose not to pursue further legal action. With this background, the police suspected that Lindsay might have faced a similar fate at the hands of Tatsuya Ichihashi. Tatsuya Ichihashi, who was born in Kifu Prefecture in 1979, came from a wealthy family. His mother was a dentist and his father was a medical doctor. He studied horticulture, which is gardening, at Chiba University, but didn't secure a job after graduation, possibly because of his family's financial support, receiving about $700 per month from his parents. 
Living in an apartment in Ichikawa, Tatsuya was quite the introvert, a hikikomori, focused only on his own life and with a keen interest in fitness. And reports suggest that Tatsuya, even during the manhunt for him, frequented gay bars and didn't shy away from exploring relationships with the same gender. On March 26, a police team consisting of nine officers went to Tatsuya Ichihashi's apartment for an inspection. They noticed movement inside and saw a portable bathtub on the balcony, which seemed unusual and raised their suspicions. The officers decided to wait outside, staging an ambush. As they waited until 7 p.m., the door of the apartment suddenly opened. Tatsuya, who was barefoot and carrying a rucksack, was taken by surprise upon seeing the police. Realizing he was cornered, he quickly fled the scene. Despite the efforts of the nine officers, Tatsuya managed to escape. All the police could seize was his rucksack, filled with gym clothes, suggesting he might have been on his way to a workout session. After Tatsuya's dramatic escape, the police returned to search his apartment. Inside, they found a scene that hinted at something sinister. Women's clothing and underwear were strewn across the disordered room. With Lindsay Hawker still missing, the police's worst fears grew, leading them to the oddly placed portable bathtub on the balcony. The discovery they made there was horrifying. Lindsay's body was buried in the bathtub, filled with soil and sand. She was naked, bound, and gagged with plastic ties and a scarf. Her hair had been shaved off, and her upper body bore numerous bruises, likely from being beaten. The autopsy revealed a brutal cause of death. Strangulation was so severe, it broke her neck cartilage, and evidence suggested she had been sexually assaulted in her final hours. Lindsay's body was sent back to England for a tearful funeral at Coventry Cathedral. Her parents released doves in memory of her lost daughter, symbolizing her angelic spirit. The funeral drew many mourners, all united in grief over her tragic death. Back in Japan, the police were now under immense pressure to locate this man, Tatsuya Ichiashi. They were determined not to repeat the failure of their initial encounter and were committed to apprehending him at all costs. Tatsuya Ichiashi became a fugitive, disappearing without a trace. He managed to evade the police by constantly moving around Japan, even hiding in an abandoned World War II bunker on a small island called Uha. For two years, justice remained elusive as the police struggled to catch this man. During this time, Tatsuya worked on construction sites, saving money primarily for plastic surgery. He even attempted self-performed plastic surgery, gruesomely altering his appearance by cutting off parts of his lips, removing moles, and reshaping his nose. Frustrated with a lack of progress in the case, Lindsay's parents returned to Japan, demanding more action from the authorities. In response, the Japanese National Police Agency increased the reward for information on Tatsuya to 10 million yen and released images of his possible disguises. This substantial reward spurred a flurry of tips, notably from cosmetic surgery clinics and construction workers. A critical breakthrough came from a plastic surgeon in Nagoya, who had before and after photos of Tatsuya's surgery. These images were widely circulated in the media, intensifying the manhunt. Feeling the pressure, Tatsuya tried to escape to Okinawa by ferry, but his luck finally ran out. An employee recognized him and alerted the authorities. Realizing his time on the run was over, Tatsuya didn't resist arrest. He confirmed his identity upon being apprehended and was taken into custody, finally putting an end to his years as a fugitive. After his confession, intriguingly, his lawyer claimed Tatsuya was coerced into confessing, citing exhaustion and threats of the death penalty. Eventually, the lawyer acknowledged that by late 2009, 
Tatsuya realized the gravity of his actions, though he added that Tatsuya didn't mean to kill her. The trial stretched on until 2011, which is quite lengthy, especially considering the extensive efforts to apprehend Tatsuya. The Chiba District Court sentenced him to life imprisonment based on his admission of strangling Lindsay to silence her screams during the assault and his subsequent efforts to hide her body. The Hawker family had sought the death penalty, but this was not granted as it is rare in Japan to impose the death penalty for a single murder. Tatsuya avoided the death penalty and it is a point of contention whether the sentence was just or not. He remains in Nagano prison and there is speculation that he might be up for rehabilitation soon, although this is not confirmed. Adding to the gravity of the situation is Tatsuya's post-arrest behavior. He wrote a book titled Taiyo Sareru Made, which means Until I Was Arrested, detailing his evasion from law enforcement and inspired a film adaptation, actions that many viewed as showing a profound lack of respect towards Lindsay Hawker's grieving family. Tatsuya reportedly promised to give all the profits generated from his book to Lindsay Hawker's family as some sort of a compensation, but it has not been confirmed whether the family accepted this gesture. Lindsay Hawker's death was horrific, and the way the police dealt with the whole thing left a lot of people shaking their heads. It seemed like there wasn't enough push to find Tatsuya quickly, and his clever hideout tactics didn't help. Now that he's finally in jail, you've got to wonder if he ever really feels sorry for what he did. But let's not just remember Lindsay as the victim of this awful crime. She was so much more than that. A truly amazing person, loved by everyone around her. Let's hold on to that. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.